Hi, my name is Daniel Avutia and I'm a geotechnical engineer at SRK Consulting. I'm involved in the risk-based design of open pit mines, which entails considering the safety and economic impacts of steepening a slope. And this generally, look, we look at the geology, the rock structures, the rock mass, and the geohydrology. And SRK are the global leaders in this field. Okay, well, I've always aspired to be a global leader in the field of engineering. So I approached some technical leaders within the South African engineering fraternity, and they mentioned to me the the problems faced with dolomite subsidence in South Africa and it was one of the biggest challenges encountered in the engineering fraternity at large. I would say from a bottom up it's probably the apathy towards maths and science from tertiary education even school education I mean people just have it holds like a negative you know, connotation and students are reluctant to pursue that so it is almost our role to inspire them and you know give back and go and present to high schools and universities. And you know, for more a top you know engineering priority would be probably to start the maintenance and emphasize the maintenance of municipal services like roads and water infrastructure. Because I mean economic growth is definitely associated to how your infrastructure is and it is hampering the economic growth of the continent at large. It would definitely be when I uh, presented at the Global Geotechnical Engineering Conference in Shanghai last year. It was 500 to 600 delegates and being the only African representative as well at the conference of predominantly North American and European delegates, that was really one of my biggest achievements. And then being selected, my paper was selected as one of the top papers in the conference and it was included in the American Society of Civil Engineers Geotechnical Special Publications. Well, I'm I have a very strict routine. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day. Well, I definitely think it boils down to your attitude and aspiring to be the best at what you can do, not only in a national context, not continental, but globally. So you always have to aspire to be innovative, you know, and hardworking and aspire for greatness. So don't rest in your laurels, don't do the bare minimum. You know, just strive for excellence and it almost becomes a habit. From a young age I took a liking to maths and science and I'd also put it down to my trip to the UK and Paris where I was exposed to the Eiffel Tower and the amazing infrastructure. It will definitely be you know the problem solving nature of it because someone approaches you with a problem and you're almost helping communities directly and you see the end result once you've completed the project. So in a nutshell, I would say it's definitely community upliftment and actually directly helping communities. Um, it will definitely have to be the coal face exposure that I got in the Northern Cape on the road rehabilitation project. Um, the steep learning curve, definitely. I mean, coming out of varsity, you need probably five to ten years experience to be put in a role like that. And being put on, in a role like that after two years was just testament to the faith they had in me and the ambition that I showed. I won the national lecture competition, which is engineers under the age of 28 presenting a 15 minute presentation on an engineering subject. And basically I'll be competing against the other five continents. And I mean, I really think I have a chance of winning the competition and it'll put me in good stead because there'll be lots of people at the conference who will be interacting with us and just the exposure. Okay, well, my dad's a doctor and my mom's a sole proprietor and I've got two brothers. One's a management accountant and my younger brother is studying information systems in the US. Well, first of all, from my dad's perspective, my dad was basically had scholarships throughout high school and university and he was basically raised by missionaries 
because his dad, well, my grandfather passed away when he was four. So, I mean, for him, his passion was always to study engineering, but because he was on a scholarship, he had to pursue medicine and, well, as his bursars, you know, forced him. So it's almost like I'm living his dream. So through, through me, he's living his dream through me now. Well, I'm the middle child. So yeah, I don't get enough attention, so that's why I've got a lot of time to work. Um, it'll definitely be watching rugby, cricket, soccer. I'm a sports fanatic. I went to the Rugby World Cup in New Zealand, went to Brazil for the Soccer World Cup, and I'll be going to London for the Rugby World Cup in October. So yes, I mean, from the age of six, I played rugby, I played provincial rugby from in high school, and then I played a bit in university for excellence, I mean globally, I mean that's got no boundaries.